Welcome to Can Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday, a staff member or volunteer will present a work from the museum's permanent collection and post questions for discussion. Please check back each day at 10 a.m. for a new work and a new conversation. Hi, I'm Susan, a docent at the museum, and today, in honor of Mother's Day, which was yesterday, I've chosen a painting by the artist Lily Martin Spencer. Lily was a mother, a mother of 13, seven who lived to adulthood. She also portrays a mother in this lovely genre painting titled Patty Cake. Patty Cake being the child's game of clapping to a rhyme. The mother's love and playfulness are masterfully captured in her expression. The child appears to me as a cherub, neither male or female, but angelic. This could be anyone's or everyone's child. As charming as the portraits are, the thing I'm initially drawn to in this painting are the colors. She uses brilliant blue in the center and nowhere else to draw our eye to the mother and child. She uses primarily complementary colors, red and green on the rug, blue and orange for the dress, trim, and fire, and lots of white against a dark background, providing strong contrast. The surface is glossy and brushstroke free. This little gem practically glows in its place of honor in the Cincinnati wing. Your computer doesn't do it justice. Add the fine details and you can easily see why Lily Martin Spencer was one of the most popular and widely reproduced female genre painters in the mid 19th century. So just how did this homeschooled and initially self-taught woman from Marietta, Ohio gain such notoriety? It probably helped that her parents let her draw on the walls. Her natural talents drew the attention and mentoring of local artists, and after her first exhibition at 17 in Marietta, that of Nicholas Longworth, a wealthy Cincinnati businessman and supporter of many artists. Here is Lily's self-portrait from that time. Lily wanted another exhibit. Longworth, off Longworth offered money for training in Boston and advised her to obtain it before exhibiting further. He would later offer Europe. Was she insulted, a little frightened to move so far from home? She declined. Moving to Cincinnati two years later, she did study with portrait and landscape painter John Isco Williams and received further assistance from artist James Beard. This painting of his in our collection reminds me of her sometimes humorous subjects. Art was frequently a genteel accomplishment of women, but rarely a career. Lily broke with tradition and became the primary breadwinner while her husband cared for the children and ordinary domestic tasks. Quite a role reversal for those days. But history tells us it was a happy marriage, if not an easy life. Moving to the more lucrative market of New York in 1948, Lily studied in evening classes at the National Institute of Design. She became an honorary member two years later, the highest recognition allowed to women at that time. Her works included rural scenes, children, animals, and ordinary domestic events. Frequently humorous or instructional, her paintings appealed to the burgeoning middle classes who found her sweet and familiar. Her popularity declined after the Civil War. Her paintings had been widely distributed as lithographs, increasing her profile but providing little income. So she needed to continue to paint, which she did until she died at the age of 79 in 1902. Here is a portrait of her at, still at her easel. It has been said of Lily's paintings of domestic scenes that she filled them with joy, pride, and a sense of accomplishment. Let's hope all you moms out there experience some of that on your special day.